Today on V-Twin Motorcycles, the latest and the next big thing from Daytona Beach. A glimpse into Daytona's past from the V-Twin vault. Builder Jeff Pology finishes his cool metric custom. Nice. And your last chance to enter the Eddie Trotta Chopper giveaway. V-Twin TV is brought to you by Geico Motorcycle Insurance. Serious protection for serious riders. Hi, I'm Dave Nichols, editor of V-Twin Magazine. Daytona Beach is a special place for those of us who love motorcycles. The best times to go, of course, are Bike Week in the spring and Biketoberfest in the fall. Daytona is a great place to take a walk on the beach, or a ride, or check out all the people, events, and cool stuff that make up Biketoberfest. This customer wanted to have nitrous installed on the bike, so it actually has its own sub-tank for fuel. You see hundreds of wild bikes on the street and in the shows, bikes you'd otherwise only see in magazines. But it's not all just eye candy. There's stuff to do, too. Do you ever wish you could do this, or this, without dealing with this, or this? If so, this could be the ticket. It looks like a rocket launcher, but it's the Dressy Dino Drag. Let's have the crew open it up and see how it works. Are y'all ready? Watch the tree. Horsepower. The dyno drag is a stationary drag strip. You roll two bikes onto the staging area, tie them down, and the dynamometers measure horsepower and speed. And, well, this guy says it best. I ain't never sat still and gone that fast. <laughs> and you don't get bugs in your teeth. Oh, baby. It's even got a built-in burnout pad. But it's not just making a lot of noise. There's real racing going on here. Now, you two are best friends. What happens if he wins? Are you still going to remain, remain friends? Yeah, but it's not fun to lose, so. Left <laughs> <laughs> lane, you're the winner. What do you got? I got a five Screaming Eagle V ride, nice 250 wide, fat tire can on it, some pipes. What makes you so confident you're going to beat this guy? Because I beat him all the time. <laughs> and what makes you so confident you're going to beat this guy? I tuned that bike. <laughs> okay, guys, y'all ready? Coming up, the new destination in Daytona. Today's feature segment is sponsored by Star Motorcycles. We build it, you make it your own. When you go to bike events, you go to see your friends. Maybe some people you'd like to get to know, but you also go to see what cool new stuff is out there too. New bikes, performance mods, t-shirts and leathers, accessories, custom parts, everything you'd ever want to personalize your ride. A short ride from the beach in Daytona, there's a new place to see cool new stuff. And it promises to be the biggest and best yet. This complex is called Destination Daytona, and the centerpiece is the world's largest Harley Davidson dealership. And there's a lot more in the works. This is the bending as we know it now. There's a hotel, there's a 
condominium complex here. We're going to have a total of about six restaurants. Over here is the Arlen Ness Custom Motorcycle Store. Then the AMI Motorcycle School is building their college campus here, as well as a big RV park. What you can visit right now is the first phase of Destination Daytona. The restaurants and permanent vendors will continue to fill the 150-acre development surrounding the Harley store. I've never been into a Harley Davidson store that's actually had escalators. I know, I don't, I haven't either. Attention shoppers, over 100,000 square feet of nothing but motorcycles and motorcycle stuff. We had to do this to make everyone comfortable and accessible to all that we have to offer. We've got uh, most of our used bikes upstairs and uh, we've got some custom motorcycles. We've got our new motorcycles downstairs. 109,000 square feet gives the people comfort. It's not just people that are in the Harley or motorcycle business. You look around here, these people just in here, look, it's an attraction. It's a biker's Disney World. The attendance has been just overwhelming. It's even surprising us as uh, how many people have been coming in here. Wow, what a huge parts department. Yes, the parts department is two stories here. And then it goes all the way back, and everything is labeled and precise. The coolest thing I'm about to show you is the service department. We've got over 36 lifts, which consists of a total of 13 technicians that split their shifts. And we're going to have four restaurants. We're going to have two theme bars. It just keeps growing and growing. So it's a total project of 150 acres. As you can see, we've got a, the traffic is backed up about a mile on US-1. It's been that way for the last three days, so. We plan on having traffic here 12 months out of the year. Pretty impressive. <laughs> Today's feature segment is sponsored by Star Motorcycles. We build it, you make it your own. Coming up, a flashback to Daytona in the 70s. Jeff Pology finishes his metric custom, and we're giving a chopper away. The V-Twin Vault is full of decades of rarely seen film and video footage. Brought to you by Geico Motorcycle Insurance. Serious protection for serious riders. This is Daytona Beach. You can still drive on it, but because of the storms, it's made the sand soft and less inviting for motorcycle traffic. But they tell me, in the 70s, this was the place to be. Check out this footage from the V-Twin Vault. Daytona was the place to be. But bikers weren't always as welcome as they are today. There's a lot of folks show up at one time. They don't need to be scared, they made a whole bunch of money. Right, they can't argue with what that. What can you say? Man worked all year, come down here and just throws that money away. Yeah, they spent 99 cents on that bacon and egg breakfast. But the beach welcomed everybody. Regardless of what you wore, or what you rode, or what you were walking. The beach was often as busy as Main Street, with plenty to see, including some stuff we can't show you. Show your t make a young pervert happy. Well, that hasn't changed either. Some things haven't changed at all. Cool by beer bellies, hot chicks, more hot chicks, hundreds of bikes on Main Street, and being hassled by the fuzz. even impromptu drag races. But some things have changed. 
you don't see many of these cool girder front ends, peanut tanks, or skinny back tires these days. And most of these choppers started out straight Harley, all the way. And dig that sissy bar. The bikes and hairdos may have changed over the years, but the spirit of Daytona remains the same. Join us next time for another visit to the V-Twin Vault. Brought to you by Geico Motorcycle Insurance. Serious protection for serious riders. Coming up, Jeff Pology paints and finishes his awesome Metric Custom. And we're giving a chopper away. Stick around for details. This Bike Builder segment is sponsored by Destination Daytona your headquarters for Daytona Bike Week. Last time, Metric customizer Jeff Pology sorted out the bodywork on his custom road liner. But before he gets back to work on the new custom, Jeff is prepping a bike to be picked up by his friend, actor Orlando Jones. Orlando has no idea what we've done to this bike. He gave us no direction. Every single thing on this bike that is chrome plated is new. There was no chrome on the bike, it was all black. Let's go check That's out the front. Hey, nice to meet you. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Oh, rock on. Whoa. So you this is, haven't been to this shop. I haven't been to the shop. This is like bike heaven. Yeah, a little bit. Look, yeah. We got some bike stuff going down. Oh, my God. Looks a little different than the last time you saw it. There's kind of only one thing to say about that. Rock on. So what'd you do with my bike? <laughs> <laughs> You can't have sex with it, can you? Is that legal? <laughs> no, that's no? not legal. Are you sure? No, I'm positive. Yeah, like you've never had sex with one of your bikes. Don't try it. <laughs> I know what's going on in here. Well, if all goes well, I'll be heading up the one with these guys. Well, for me, it's what it's all about. Open roads, friends, bikes. That's it. This is so sick. Unbelievable. Now it's back to the road liner. The gas tank has been stretched, and the bodywork completed on the tank and fenders. Cool. Major difference. Jeff's painter, Benny, is ready to discuss the paint job details. Just do a real bitch and scallop look right here, and then tail off with a different pattern up here. Then what are we gonna do to make it pop? Or do we just do it all in color? Yeah, do it in color. Well, Benny's probably painted 40 bikes for me, so it just, you know, he knows what I want usually. Jeff doesn't talk a whole lot, so, you know, it's taken years to kind of get a feel for what he wants to do. If you want to kind of rough tape something on just so we know what we're doing and I can put the dash on and I can yeah. dig digital photo it. Uh, ultimately, he has to be happy. It's his vision. He's the doctor. I just fill the prescription. I just can't always read his handwriting. We just pick a color and tape some graphics out. Just get a rough idea, and then he can pretty much just go with it. Start laying out the main graphic, and then I'll work off that. It's gonna get a couple other spears of so different colors on there. These lines are the uh, struts. I marked them off so I could lay out the graphics around them. The foundation work is, is real critical. How you prep the metal, your body work, the primers that you use. People can criticize your artwork for 10 years, but the idea is to make the paint job last for 10 years so they can still criticize you 10 years from now. You know? Anybody can do a wild looking paint job, but I think the essence is in the details and doing it proper. This is just a regular silver base. I'm just gonna add some orange dye to it. And then a little base coat clear. If you want to know a couple of tricks, every company makes good paint. In order to get a good product, you have to know how they work. Candies work off light, so the reflective base that you put down is what's reflecting light to your eye. And once you understand how light works off the paint, then you can start doing tricks with it. I am doing a particular trick on this. The reason that I shot orange with the silver is to make the orange really pop. Then you get a reflection of real light candy colors on top of this darker orange base, and it gives a two-dimensional candy instead of just a one orange over silver. I like using just the regular hair dryer. The regular heat guns are a little bit too hot for me.
color looks really nice on the black, huh? It's amazing what a little line will do for them. Well, we're doing the pinstripes, and I don't do it a traditional way with a brush. I've developed a way to airbrush it on. I just think the results are much more precise. I can get the points to end up where I want. I don't have uneven lines. What I do is I outline the outside shape first, then mask it, and then I mask each inside line and airbrush them one at a time. That way you don't have to double mask on your edges. I know this sounds weird, but I put on two pairs of glasses. It gives twice the magnifying power. To do these super fine lines, you have to have the paint pretty thin, but if you put it on too wet at first, it wants to creep under the tape. So you have mist it on a little bit, let it dry, and then you can kind of fill it in. It took me a while to develop a method to where it worked. I was so pleased with the results that I wouldn't take a brush to it again. I don't care how much time I could save. Benny's final clear coat will really make the colors and the pinstripes pop. Back at Jeff's shop, all the bike's final elements are coming together. The crawler did a good job. <laughs> and Benny's got the paint done too. When we come back, we'll see how the bodywork looks on the bike and how the bike looks on the road. Plus, details on the chopper giveaway. This Bike Builder segment is sponsored by Destination Daytona, your headquarters for Daytona Bike Week. V-Twin TV is brought to you by GEICO Motorcycle Insurance. Serious protection for serious riders. Jeff Pology's Roadliner Custom is painted and ready for final assembly. You know, you eat, drink, and sleep this project until it's finished, so the satisfaction you get is when you're putting on the last couple parts and looking at the final product, and you know, that's when it's all coming together, and that's the most, most satisfying time. Chat's real good, just check and make sure the belt pulleys are aligned real good. This is symbolic, the first piece of paint's going on the bike. You notice the painter is still here because if we screw something up, he likes to go home and work all night fixing it. It's not a bare canvas. For him to be able to decipher what it's going to look like around all of these objects, which ones to chrome, which ones to customize, I think is his strong point in bike building. I love that blue in there. I'm so glad you put that in there. The paint job on this bike is absolutely designed to make the bike look smaller, lighter, and more speedy. If you look at the tank, the black on the top makes part of the tank up here kind of disappear. So the focal point and the highlight is right here. So the tank, again, looks longer and thinner. Having been involved with the Roadliner since it was just a sketch, and then customizing it and seeing it come to fruition, just feeling of accomplishment. It's gone full circle now. Uh, <laughs> it's just classy. Jeff, this is an incredible transformation. It's pretty amazing. Whenever I get done building a bike, I'm just so, I'm so done with it. It's just, I'm just over with the whole project. And so the best, the best a bike ever looks is when it's leaving. But this bike, <laughs> yeah, this bike I wouldn't mind keeping around. It's another first, you know, the first custom <clears throat> Roadliner. Be sad to see it go. <laughs> like you said, it is a drastic change from where we started. Because this was a stock motorcycle that yeah. no one has any aftermarket parts for. Show us some of the covers that you had to do from scratch. Well, we built this starter cover. This cover was a new part, the clutch cover. And then we built this complete billet drive cover. A one-off piece, of course, we made just for this bike. Well, just an incredible job. Motorcycles are interactive artwork, I guess. It's like a sculpture that you can actually go do something with. And I think that's some of what appeals about motorcycles and customizing to people. You know, people get into it and they kind of get hooked on it. And you just kind of roll with it. And the next thing you know, you've got this incredibly awesome piece of machinery that you've built. <laughs> For 
his first public viewing, Jeff motors the new bike up to the legendary rock store near Malibu. It'll be a good place to judge people's reaction and see what people think. Feels light, huh? Oh, it's very light. Yeah. Oh, this thing's beautiful. We just built it. Oh, you just, we just finished it. it. Yeah. And I was sitting here enjoying the weather, and I looked over, and I said, "Wow, that's you know, a road liner," and I was pretty impressed with it. It just stands out. This is something that I feel is not over the top, overdone, crazy, stupid. Um, I feel it's just really a beautifully crafted, elegant, stylish custom. It's what a custom should be. Can you drag stuff in corners? I have already dragged it on both sides. The pegs, you know. It's an all-around thing. It's that toy that you can tinker with. It's that lifestyle that you can go live. It's that hobby that you can do with your wife or your girlfriend. Everything about it is just like kind of a lifestyle. And if you're into motorcycles, you can literally spend your whole life, all your extracurricular time, you can spend in the motorcycle lifestyle, whether you're working on your bike, whether you're buying new, riding to an event. It's just a whole big thing that becomes your life. Meanwhile, we're giving away a $70,000 chopper that Eddie Trotta built on earlier episodes. If you haven't entered the giveaway, log on to vtwintv.com, and you'll need this week's password. Here it is. All the giveaway details are on the website. Another cool custom bike is on the road. Join us again for more great custom bikes, people, and stories from the world of V-Twin motorcycles. I'm Dave Nichols. See you down the road. Don't forget to log on to the website this week's password. Closed captioning sponsored by Extreme Machine. Motorcycles are interactive artwork, I guess. It's like a sculpture that you can actually go do something with. Rock on.